It's almost as if the press and the personalities have swapped roles for this hearing. We've talked previously about how the claimants are doing everything that they can to get the litigation into the public domain. The fact of their being here in court also means it's much more likely to interest the public. Now we're going to explore the flip side, how the Mail's publisher is acting against its reputation as a champion of free speech and the freedom of the press. The start of these proceedings has seen it actively trying to keep things from the public via reporting restrictions. That's primarily in terms of shielding the names of the 73 journalists and executives who are named. Arguing for more restrictions on the press is out of character for the Mail Group's publications. In arguing for these restrictions, it relied on the Human Rights Act, which its newspapers have repeatedly criticised. Dacre, ANL's current editor-in-chief, talked a lot about paradox in his speech before the Leveson inquiry. What we've seen so far is a window into what happens when editorial values come into conflict with business priorities and the interests of the powerful individuals implicated. Look at how this is being covered by different parts of the press. For example, there's an interesting difference between the pretty neutral coverage from Sky News UK and the less neutral coverage of Sky News Australia, which is owned by Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, which was famously and heavily implicated in the phone hacking scandal. Whatever happens, we've already learned some very interesting things about the motivations behind different parts of our media.